Welcome to Empowered by Iron, the podcast for female strength athletes by female strength athletes. We are your hosts, Dr. Kristen Lander from Fiercely Fuel Nutrition Coaching and Dr. Mary Morton, scientist and weightlifter. Together, we are Empowered by Iron. Welcome to this week's episode of Empowered by Iron. If you guys haven't noticed, we have created a parent company to Empowered by Iron called Female Strength Academy. So if you were following us on Instagram, you are still following us, but under the name Female Strength Academy. And you are probably not following Empowered by Iron on Instagram anymore. So make sure you go over and follow both pages on Instagram so that you're getting all of our content. We are Female Strength Academy and we are Empowered by Iron. It's still Mary and I. It's just us. It's us. All right. So let's jump into this week's episode. I posted something in our stories on Female Strength Academy On your takeover. Kristen takes Uh, over the Instagram on Tuesday. I do Thursdays. Yes. And you mentioned something about this, the B word. I mentioned something about balance and living purposely out of balance sometimes and got a lot of really good feedback on it. So we decided to do a full episode. So here we are balance or the lack thereof balance lack thereof balance (laughs) so one thing that i notice um is that high achieving people Mm -hmm. which is probably you if you're an athlete yes um are are, if you're doing anything besides going home and watching tv you might be high achieving right um we you often have to purposely live your life out of balance at times. And I think there's this notion that like your life is supposed to be perfectly balanced all of the time or you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, we see like social media posts about life balance all the time and like, like, don't get me wrong. Balance is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to have healthy relationships, a healthy relationship with ourself, um, keep our bodies healthy, uh, Keep our relationships our healthy. Our relationships healthy, have g- a good work environment, a good training environment. Like all that stuff is important. But there are times in your life where it purposely has to be out of balance and it's totally okay. Yep. You shouldn't feel bad about it. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of us have goals, right? Either professionally or athletically. And often I think for us and a lot of you listening, um, that you have these goals that a lot of people just don't understand. Yeah. And no amount of explaining is ever going to get them to understand. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, I I think. um, Well, okay. So a lot of the times people, they ask me what I do because I graduated and technically I'm unemployed. Technically, technically you're unemployed but technically, technically I'm not you're self-employed yeah now. so when I try to explain it to people if it's someone who lifts I get really excited because I know that they're going to at least for the most part understand yeah if it's someone who doesn't lift I just say oh um I have a business with a podcast and we do strength training like I keep it very simple because it's not going to be me sitting there. I'm going to sit there and try to explain to them for 20 minutes. Oh, no. So we focus on women who do powerlifting. Oh, powerlifting is squat bench deadlift. It's different than Olympic. Oh, Olympic weightlift. Like I'm not going to I'm not going to waste my energy. (laughs) Not that I don't want to inform and educate people, but this is just like some random person at the store. I'm not going to sit there and explain to them what it is because it's a waste of my time. Well, we're like a small little group of the population yeah. <laughs> and people just tend not to understand that. Yeah. So I think a lot of times people don't understand our, um, our professional goals. I mean, this goes for everyone or, and even people that are close to you, even your spouse might not, you might have like a really big professional goal and they just might not get it. Like, because it's not their goal. It's yeah. not, it's not what's important in their life. And while they probably want to see you succeed and be happy, they don't necessarily understand like, why are you working so much or whatever, you know, yeah. why is your life out of balance to the point that it's noticeable yeah. to people? Yeah. Um, well, when I started the podcast or sorry, when we started the podcast, I remember telling my then boyfriend, now husband, I was telling him about it and he 
saw it as one more thing I was adding to my plate. Yeah. And he, he didn't think that it was a bad idea, but what he thought was, I see Mary being successful with her PhD coursework. Therefore, she needs to focus on her PhD course week, coursework as a supportive spouse. Right. I am going to give my opinion and say that I think you should be focusing on this. Good thing I ignored it <laughs> and just continued doing both um, for a while. But like he had good intentions. Right. He, he thought the balance or where I needed to focus most of my energy was my coursework because that was my initial goal coming down here. And, you know, my goals changed and shifted. And so now we're here. But initially it was he saw that adding an extra thing into my life that didn't need to that happen. It was not necessary. And it wasn't right. going to get me to whatever goal that I had. Right. And yeah. so the, I think there are times when we will have, when we're, we're living our life out of balance, it's, it's obvious, right? Like um, you're spending less time with your significant other or you're spending less time with your friends or maybe you're spending less time in the gym because you have a really big work project that's taking you away from the gym. And so you may have people in your life who notice this and will say like, hey, what, you know, what's going on? What are you doing? Like you seem really obsessed with this thing or you're working too hard. Um, and I know that probably a lot of us who have friends who don't lift are like, why do you spend so much time at the gym? Um, so yeah. we can get it from a lot of different angles. People, um, maybe voicing their concern or, um, maybe even like their disapproval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Um, and so I think that when those kinds of questions come up, it's important to look at like, who is this person in your life and does, does their input matter? Like, does their opinion matter? If it's their, if it's your spouse, mm -hmm. their opinion probably matters because maybe they're concerned about what this means for your relationship. Maybe you're not spending enough time in the relationship yep. or maybe they are concerned about your health. Um, and maybe you are taking on too much, um, or maybe, um, there could be a lot of different things. And so I think it's important when somebody important to you is noticing that your life is out of balance, mm -hmm. having a discussion with that person and the kind of explaining to them what your goals are, yeah. um, figuring out what their level of concern is and then making sure that your decisions and that your um, your purposely living your life out of balance isn't negatively affecting them in any way. Yeah. Um, because obviously if you list out your priorities in your relationship with your significant other is a top priority, we got to make sure that that's taken care of. Mm -hmm. Um, even if you're living your life out of balance. So, um, and then like take into account what this person's concern is and make sure that you aren't harming them and you aren't harming yourself. But I think that all comes from, we talk about this all the time with every time you have a goal, list out your priorities. Yep. Is your party. So for instance, you guys know, Mary and I just launched female strength Academy, yes. which, um, which th this is not a complaint it, by any means. Uh, we yep. are so excited that we did this. But it means that for a solid four and a half months, we were both. That's all we did. That is all we did. Um, it was either work, sleep, or train. Right. And eat. Sometimes at our desks while working on things. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I wouldn't eat, which right. was bad. Right. 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 You that know, too. whatever. <laughs> that too. And so um, it was definitely a period where we lived super, super out of balance. And it's not sustainable, right? Like that's not... We no. could not have continued that no, no, for no. probably any longer than what we did it for. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it took a toll, I think, on us mentally. Yeah. I think even the two of us started to like go at each other's throats a little bit, not in like we a did. mean, horrible way. We just like, you get snippy when you are spread thin. When you're spread thin. Absolutely. Which is one, one way that I think that that being like that driven or that high achieving can sometimes impact your relationships negatively Yeah, is that if you're really snippy and short with people, yeah, uh, that's a problem. And I know that's something that I do. I mean, I get that way with my husband for sure. Like I just, I'm spread so thin that sometimes I don't have patience for things that I really 
should just should have patience for (laughs) have patience for and chill and so um i think that if you are in a period where you're having to live your life out of balance like list like i said list out your priorities know what you are willing to sacrifice during that period of time and what you aren't willing to sacrifice during that period of time so for me that's i'm not willing to sacrifice my work um, because I have two other businesses besides Female Strength Academy. Yeah, you have to do those. Um, right. That's number one. Um, well, I don't, I don't know that I can call it number one, but that, that's for sure. I'm not willing to sacrifice my relationship with my husband. I'm not willing to sacrifice my training. And I'm not willing to sacrifice my self-care, my recovery from training, and my mental health. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> But there were some things I was willing to sacrifice during that Mm -hmm. period of time. Like I didn't have a social life. I did one social thing in four months. Um, I didn't really clean my house, which I talked about in the stories that day. I finally got my car detailed. I just got it back and it's amazing. She loves it. Oh my gosh. It's so good. And I kind of like mostly cleaned my house. Mostly. Yeah. It was a lot of work. But yeah, so you have to be willing to look at like what what will I sacrifice and what what won't I sacrifice and yep. live your life according to that mm-hmm. anything well, we that talk about up. this all the time with our female strength ladies and in our course we talk about I, I try to stress so much like write your priorities down like physically yes. write out what are your priorities and then look at your life and how you're living your life and ask yourself do my priorities what I want Is that matching up with how my life is structured? And if the answer comes back is no, then you know you need to restructure. You need to figure out how you can better structure your life so that Mm -hmm. it's fitting your priorities. Or maybe look at your priorities and be like, you know what? Actually, that's not really a priority. Let me move that down the list. Because like for me, when we were doing all this, I also started my kitten rescue for those of you who don't know, I officially have a 5013C kitten rescue. Mm-hmm. So I'm not just rescuing kittens for like funsies. I, I am, but like it's it's a legit thing. And so I was doing Female Strength Academy. I was injured, thankfully, so training could fall to the wayside. So training fell to the wayside for me. I could not sacrifice the business stuff, Female Strength Academy. I could not sacrifice my kitten rescue stuff. And I could not sacrifice my relationship. Um so, and that doesn't seem like as many as Kristen, but I kind of let my mental health fall to the wayside. I kind of let my training fall to the wayside and even sometimes my food. And I'm studying for the CISSN, the, the um, c- what does that stand for? Uh, certified, certified by the International we'll Society study. of Sports Nutrition. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm studying for that exam and I was studying two hours a day and it just got to the point that for us to launch on that day, I had to stop everything that wasn't web design, content building, podcasting, like I couldn't do anything else. And the other night, because I kept going after we launched, I kind of kept going like an idiot. And the other night I was a wreck. (laughs) I, so I was, I'm bottle feeding babies and you have to wake up every couple hours, even at night to feed them. And I, they were having diarrhea. They were like sick. And like, I was trying to do the website. I was trying to edit episodes. Like my computer wasn't working. Something didn't export right. And like, I couldn't figure out how to get these babies to not be pooping their pants every like five minutes. And so they're also pooping on each other. Yeah. It's disgusting. So everyone (laughs) gets a bath and it, it takes up so much time. And I'm like, why, what am I doing that I can't like, there has to be a solution. So I came up here, I sat in that corner (laughs) and I cried (laughs) and I did some research late at night. It was like midnight. I was up way too late and I found some solutions and I listened to the pooping issue, to the pooping issue, to the computer issue. And then I was like, huh, maybe being up at midnight in my room or in my office crying because I can't figure something out. Maybe there's something else I need to be addressing. So the next day I listened to a couple podcasts about some of the people that I really idolize both in the the rescue, the rescue world and in the strength world. And one of the things that the rescue lady said that I think pertains to all of us is she said, you can't save anyone else before you save yourself. Yes. So I can't give anything to the business if Mary's fucked up. Right. 
So I, in the past week, I wrote down my entire schedule or like my to-do list for the week. It seems like a lot what I wrote down, but I wrote down literally everything I need to do. I need to wake up and feed the babies. I need to make sure I take Dixie on a walk, my dog. I need to make sure that I take time to do my rehab, which I'd let fall to the wayside because I was like, I just don't have time. Mm -hmm. But I made sure I made a checklist for every little thing and the big things because otherwise it wasn't going to happen for me. (laughs) Right. But taking the time to like, recognize if you have to hit rock bottom to recognize then yeah. you're gonna hit rock bottom to recognize it but if you can listen to this podcast and say huh you know I f- do feel a little out of balance maybe there's something I can do mm-hmm. to to help or or add something to your priority list like I said mental health was not on my priority list it's now on my priority list so I have to make sure I do something every day that helps my brain stay in my brain Right. Well, and I think that, so the other thing is, so we talked about like, sometimes we'll see posts on social media about life balance, like everything, it looks like everyone has everything figured out and it's I'm perfect. I'm on vacation and I'm just so happy. You're like, shut your mouth. <laughs> but also the flip side to that is that I think a lot of times in our society being like really busy and overscheduled is sometimes idolized and that yeah. you're doing things right. You're grinding, you're yeah. hustling. And like stupid words. That's also not true. And that's also not good. Like for us, there was an end date, right? Mm-hmm. We knew female strength Academy was going to be launched on April 15th. And at that point, then we could sit down, rework, like, what is our workflow going forward? What, I mean, obviously we're, we're content producers, so we have to produce content. It doesn't have to be on that same level as it was to get everything launched. So how can we fit this into our lives and find a little bit more balance, but like having an end date is super important. I mean, even if you're in school, Mm -hmm. you've got an end date of a semester, right? You're going to work really hard for the semester and then you get spring break or Christmas break or whatever. Yeah. Um, if you have a, if you're training for a competition and you feel like all of your energy is going into your nutrition and your recovery and your training, like there's an end date to that too. Right. And then you should be planning for the week after to take a mental deload. Like yes. go hang out with your significant other, go to a movie, go enjoy life, go on a hike. Like that's your time to recoup. If you are finishing a competition and jump right back into what you were doing, you're going to lose it. Much like we talked about last episode, you need a hypertrophy cycle to break up your strength cycles so you you can take care of your body. You need a mental break from sometimes life so you can recoup. One thing after I had that big breakdown, I went in and I bought tickets to go see my parents for three days. Like it's a short trip, but I'm like looking, I'm counting down the minutes to go see them because I know that like I... Mom, if you're listening, I'm sorry. It was supposed to be a surprise. Uh, I know just going home and being centered there is going to be a good break for me. And yeah. But three days is enough for me to be like, okay, cool. We can go back to real life. But recognizing that you need to take that mental break from whatever it is yes. is super important. So important. And if you have a boss that is telling you to go, 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 your boss is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> If, if that boss wants you to perform optimally, they need to be looking at you and saying, you know what? You need a break. I need you to take three-day weekend and don't think about work. Like, that's a really good boss. Absolutely. I totally agree. I uh, have been my own boss almost my entire life. Um, and I have friends who have bosses who just work them to the ground and I'm like well that and then they end up like getting super frustrated and just like leaving yeah I'm like okay great well that was really b- brilliant of you to work that person that hard mm-hmm. um, well and then they end up blaming the person and, and the person right. probably worked really hard and then worked themselves into a hole and then they couldn't figure something out and then they left but what they don't yeah. recognize is hey you could have given that person just a little break absolutely my brother just started a job and in his job his boss said I'm gonna need you to work really really hard for periods and then I want you to take two week vacations and I want you to not talk to us That's and amazing. come back. Well, it's important, right? I think yeah. in this day and age, if you don't have a boss that doesn't recognize mental health, right? I'm sorry, but that sucks first of all. But secondly, like maybe it's time to find a company or boss that does, because if you are not mentally there, your work's going to fall to shit. Everything's going to fall to shit. Absolutely. 
one of the things during this process um, of launching Female Strength Academy, because I think this is probably the busiest I've ever been in my life because I also couldn't, there was not a lot that I could give up in terms of my regular activities. I was training for meat. Mm-hmm. So my training was really high up there. Um, and recovery. So, yeah, recovery was huge. So that was one of the things that I figured out was that if I can like really concentrate some time on self-care, um, I can keep going. I can keep doing this. And I definitely, I definitely pushed the limits a little too far and figured out what I can and can't handle. Um, and then kind of pulled back and reworked things. But one of the things like, um, one of the things that really was helpful for me was allowing myself to be flexible with my schedule. Yes. So if I kind of started to notice like my husband was a little irritated that, I mean, we, we have dinner together every night um, and we did throughout this process, but um, we usually reserve the time after dinner to just kind of like chill out, maybe watch the news and discuss the news together. Um, and I wasn't doing that sometimes. And I could kind of like tell we've been together 10 years. I could kind of tell when he was a little irritated about it. Um, and so I'd be like, you know what? This work that I had planned for after dinner, it can wait. I'm going to get up a little earlier tomorrow and finish what it was I was going to do tonight. Um, and so like just being a little bit more flexible and allowing yeah. myself that flexibility. Mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, some people maybe don't have that flexibility in their schedule, but, um, for me, that was just being able to say, I'm actually not going to do this right now. I'm going to do this another time was so mentally freeing mm-hmm. and really gave myself a break and, and made me feel like I was taking care of myself and I was taking care of my priorities actually by pushing something off. Yeah. Um, and giving yourself the, the like saying it's okay. Yeah. That I'm pushing this off. The brain yourself, shut off. Yeah. Giving yourself the permission That's the to word. not do it. Yeah. Totally. I totally agree. Um, I think the other thing that can be very helpful if you can't push work off, um, the other thing that could be very, very beneficial is if you all take it day by day. Remember, every single day is going to be different, right? And if you obsess over the lows or the highs, every day is going to be bad. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. And I think that goes back to one thing I say all the time is like being present in the moment. So that's one thing that was a theme this whole four months for me was when I'm at work seeing patients, I am thinking only about that patient. I'm not thinking about the 10 nutrition check-in client emails that I have Mm -hmm. in my inbox to deal with once I'm done with patients. I'm not thinking about this graphic that I needed to get to you for the website, um, that like I'm not in, in just living in the moment and just knowing that if you're taking care of the task Mm -hmm. that you need to be taking care of right now, the other things are there waiting for you once you're done, but you're not, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. If you're, if you're trying to think about all of the things that you have to do while you're doing something that you have to do, that just makes it way worse. Yeah. Be present. Be present. Take it day by day. Okay. I think that that's it. If you guys aren't already, make sure you're following us at Empowered by Iron on Instagram. Join our Facebook group page, Female Strength Academy, and make sure that you tag us in your posts. We love seeing everything and let us know what you guys want to hear next. We love you guys and we will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.